The uh, Golden hey, Live, yeah. Hey there, Beer Two. Welcome back to Beer Analysis 101 with your host, Maxwell Star. Maxwell. Tonight with a uh, with a, a lovely beer, special edition beer from Innocent Gun. Gonna take a look at the Imagine mm -hmm. Guns Choice 2018, a black IPA made with coconut and rhubarb, and uh, the winning uh, recipe from a friend of mine from New Brunswick. Anyway, moving right along, let's go over to the panel who decided to show up tonight. Uh, we've got uh, starting with uh, on the panel uh, from your view because mine's backwards. Anyway, whatever, starting from left to right, we'll go start with the A's for Ashley Sexton, Sexton Brewing. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing very well, Macwell. How are you tonight? Macwell. Uh, oh, I'm Macwell. <laughs> Mark Star. I'm doing great, thank you. Right on. You did, yeah, I don't need to guess. Whatever. Yeah. All right, Mr. Redbeard, how are you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much for having me, Macwell. Thank you for coming on. <laughs> All right, and another one I'm happy to have here tonight is, uh, of course, Mr. On the Tenth and Off the Tenth now himself. You know, I am, tenth I, sign. I am, I am. I am off the tenth, and I appreciate you for uh, for inviting me to this uh, thing, even though it's taken us a while to to do this. But uh, you know what, yeah. Macwell, you're the best. Macwell, you rock. Right on. Uh, and, uh, of course, last but definitely, well, I keep calling him least, but we're all equals here to a degree. Uh, Mr. Greg, how are you doing tonight? And I wasn't even going to call you Macwell because I thought that was rude and might hurt your feelings. But you know what? No, Nobody I'm else not, gonna calling me Macwell. No, I'm not going to say this. I'm just going to say I'm really happy, Big Papa Smurf, that we're finally doing John's sake. Choice. <laughs> uh all right, well, we'll discuss that later on the chat. All right, so we're moving on to Innocent Gun's Don's Choice. Uh, let's go into the uh, the beer history about Innocent Gun, and we uh, uh, start. We'll just get right on the fact that uh, Lee did Innocent Gun original a while back on his chat. I'm getting an echo from somebody. Uh, Lee did when when Lee was doing the Innocent Gun. Uh, sorry, when Lee was doing Beer Analysis 101, he did uh, the Innocent Gun original. So previously, we kind of in the series have looked at this at this beer before. Don't go into too much detail. So, um, but um, other than the state, of course, the Innocent Gun began in 2002 when Dougal Gun Sharp was tasked by distillery conglomerate William Grant and Sons, owners of the uh, Glenfiddich, Balvini, and Grant's brands. Uh, to come up with a beer to be used in production of their Grant's Ale Cask Reserve. Uh, the beer was aged in bourbon barrels for over a month to impart a sweet multi-character to the barrels uh, before the barrels were emptied and filled with whiskey to mature. Originally, the beer was discarded, but by random chance, Dougal Sharp tasted the beer coming out and found the barrel aging made the beer taste amazing. Innocent Gun was uh, founded in 2003 to capitalize on this stroke of genius. Uh, the idea was so successful that by 2009, Innocent Gun had become a Scottish classic and the number one British beer imported into Canada. Not sure if that's still true, but it's still pretty damn good. Anyway, uh, after its first successful run in Sweden in 2016, Innocent Gun launched their Imagine and Gun campaign in, in, in the Canadian market in September of 2017. Um, where beer fans across the country could submit their creative beer ideas for what could be Innocent Gun's next brew. The winner of the contest, selected from a fan vote of the finalists, would win a trip to Edinburgh, Edinburgh, Scotland, uh, to brew the beer with Dougal Sharp. In October, the list of October, October 2017, the list of finalists, finalists were selected with Don Guimond of Grand Bay, New Brunswick, better known as fellow beer tuber Don Rig 13's beer reviews, uh, being selected as winner of Imagine and Gun contest in November. In February, he flew to Edinburgh to uh, uh, last February last year. He uh, flew to Edinburgh to brew his beer, uh, which is a 6.2% ABV black IPA made with coconut root and rhubarb and then aged in bourbon barrels. Uh, he believed, I asked Don about it, he believed that they were uh, brewed in um, uh, Kentucky bourbon barrels, but he wasn't absolutely sure uh, what they used or for how long. So I think he just participated in the brewing process. But anyway, um, I tried to get him on here tonight, but uh, he unfortunately wasn't available to come. But uh, cheers to you, buddy. Well, or taking a look at your beer anyway. So moving right along, uh, let's go to Mr. Uh, Ashley West, uh, Ashley Sexton, to uh, see what's your history with uh, with Innocent Gun. <laughs> you, you slipping, man. 
slipping back well. That was intentional. Um, innocent gun, you know, I've, 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 I've had a lot of their, uh, their basic offerings that are available here in the LCBO. Um, not a big fan of their, uh, their regular ale. That's just in uh, the, the, uh, barrels, but, um, uh, I don't know. It's sort of hit or miss for me. Um, it's, it's, it's not a, uh, it's not a brewery. I sort of seek out all that much, but, uh, I, I, I suppose, uh, I can see how it's, uh, a brewery that people do enjoy the, you know, if you're really big on barrels and you love all that barrel aging and you love those, those types of flavors, then, um, and you like them in all of your beers, <laughs> then, you know, it, then it's a good uh, brewery of choice, but, uh, I've, I'm sort of hit or miss with, uh, with innocent gun. They do have nice glasses though. There we go. Nice. <laughs> Actually, yes, they do have nice glasses. They, they do have nice glasses. Right on. Uh, Mr. Uh, Redbeard, what's your history? Um, had a fair bit of Innocent Gun beers. Completely forgot about the uh, glass that came in that pack, so I'm drinking out of my Teku. But, uh, yeah, um, a lot of their barrel-aged stuff is pretty decent. Their IPAs, I find, generally aren't all that great. By the, I don't know if it's the style they're going for, or by the time it gets over here, the flavor has kind of gone to hell. But, yeah, most of their... Uh, most of the darker stuff I'm a big fan of. I never had this though. Mm. I've been saving this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think this came to market at around the end of October. Yeah, it's my like best before day actually says October 2019, so I'm assuming that's correct. Right on. Um Mr. Uh Mr. Christopher Klezak. Okay, uh, my history with this beer, I would have had one earlier, but I had to go deliver my other one to somebody else, which was cool. But um, and, and I was going to try to have a little bit of a history with this beer, but that didn't happen. So regardless, uh, my history with Innocent Gun is I'm not a fan of their beers, period. They all, like somebody once said already, like Ashley said already, like they have this, this taste that all the beers seems to run through all the beers. I don't know what they're using in every single beer. It's probably that is what I'm getting. It might be dirty mop water, who knows, but we'll see. I've already tried this beer now, so we'll get to, we'll get to what I think soon enough. And I almost dropped my phone there, but um, yeah, that's my history. Innocent gun, not a big fan, but we'll see with this beer. Right on. Greg, what's your history with innocent gun? Well, this specific beer, none. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I never thought to buy a second one because I didn't know if I liked the first one. Uh, so, in terms of Innocent Gun, like actual, the brewery, uh, I've had quite a few of their beers. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to check to see exactly how many, but I've probably had about you know thirty or so of their beers. Um, I usually get it almost every release I buy a bottle of, as long as it's not too exorbitantly overpriced. Um, and basically, I think I'm sort of with the consensus here is they all kind of have a very similar taste. There are a few that surprise you now and then. Um, but for the most part, they all kind of have the same taste. I don't mind them. They're always sort of a very much a good beer for me. I rarely will get a beer from them that is bad, but I will rarely get a beer from them that impresses me either but unfortunately all their beers just about anything except for their like og release is like five bucks for a little tiny bottle which i believe was the price for this guy as well and frankly i mean i mean this one sounds interesting but most of the time it's like oh it's some sort of version of a barrel aged beer that's six point something percent and aged for 40 days or so and it's Five bucks for a little bottle. Not not really worth it for a beer that's not particularly impressive. Um, but that's just oh, them overall as a brewery. Who knows? Maybe this one will break that mold. Hmm. Yeah. All right. As for my personal history with Innocent Gun, I think the first time I ever tried Innocent Gun beer was either 2009 or 2010. And it was back when they still made the... Uh, like it, when Innocent Gun first came out, there was like two versions that were available. There was a blonde, and then there was the original. And the blonde, um, the first time I had it, it was, you know, it was back when they were in clear bottles, and it was just Skunk City. So I had a really bad experience the first time I ever had a uh, an Innocent Gun beer. 
The second time I ever had an Innocent Gun beer, I bought one of the originals. This one was a lot fresher, even though it was still in clear bottles. It was nice. I, I In the review that I did, it was right as I started doing the reviews in Maxwell Stars Beer Review and in 2011. And uh, my exact words were, it was like sex in a glass. We all know that's not true. There's nothing that bears being. Anyway, but I thought it was damn fucking good the first time I had it. Over the years, there's been a lot of releases that uh, from Innocent Gun that uh, have been top. They, they used to be pretty damn top notch, um, but when as as uh, as time moved on, like there was, it just became more. Not so much that after a while, they, the new releases they put out seemed to be one trick ponies. Like they would just take a X barrel and put Y beer into it, and it's kind of like relying heavily on just using the barrels to define the. Uh, the quality and and, and 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 of the beer and over the years especially in since about 2014 i think right there it's kind of dropped off slightly and uh more recent releases like kith and kin or kindred spirits have kind of been eh. um i still buy them whenever they come out because i still like them and i i did enjoy blood red sky the that they had recently and Kindred Spirits still really wasn't that bad, but um, but as far as uh, releases, I mean, they haven't really hit. Like, I think they peaked with me uh, when they were. If anybody remembers the original, uh, like Irish whiskey cask uh, or Irish whiskey barrel uh, beer that they did back in 2013, I think it, Chad sent me a bottle of it. It was one of the best beers I'd ever had from this brand, and um, I miss those days. So. I think coincidentally, maybe around the same time they started doing the, doing this Okerator stuff. Why well, I might be wrong on that, but uh, as far as this beer goes, uh, I of course I bought it when the moment it came out. Uh, I'm not going to give uh, my thoughts on it right now, but I'm just saying that uh, I've I've had several bottles of this by now, and I was really hoping Don would come on tonight, but of course he didn't. Oh well. Um, so moving on along, do what do you have for uh, for comments, uh, Ashley? You want to? Read them for us if you if you're if you're capable. Yeah, yeah I can do that. If you're capable, uh, I I am I'm capable. Sure capable. May not be willing, but I will do it anyways. <laughs> um, Lee Russell is imploring us to please keep this professional, keep it classy, maybe for Don's sake. Um, uh, Rainy and your parade is in the chat. They're going back and forth. Um, Rainy on your parade says no. Don probably has a. Uh, really busy really busy so go easy on him we will yeah I, I don't know the guy so but uh i'm very jealous that he has his name on a beer uh eric gilbert's in the chat hello eric hey, um lee russell all equal more like a Will marxist star that is uh that's a pretty accurate description he's, uh, quite the communist when he's not <laughs> When you guys aren't seeing the chat, man, you should listen to this guy. He's out of control. Um, oh, Craig from Kent Beer Reviews is still on some uh, tropical hey, island somewhere in the mid-Atlantic. Um, good evening. Um, let's see. And Eric Gilbert, he drank all of his Don's Choice over the holidays, so drinking an Oscar Blues Hotbox Coffee Porter. I saw those packs in the LCBO. That is actually very good, and I think it's quite worth buying for 11 bucks. I think it's 11 bucks a four-pack, and I quite enjoyed it. I got one left. And uh, yeah, Tech Curry. I, I, oh, sorry. No, um, I kind of. I'd rather oh. wish that you got awesome stuff like that in New Brunswick, but I digress. And uh, and Yurt actually has something uh, cordial and polite to say. He's like, I enjoyed this beer. Congrats to Don. And uh, that is probably the only uh, the only thing of note that Yurt will say all night. Yeah, I mean, I, I can I can be upset if I wanted to about Don not coming in, but at the same time, I, I'm really proud of him for, for having this, and there's not really much bad I could say about the guy, because he's an incredibly nice guy when you meet him in person, so I got nothing really but good things to say about him, and I'm just mm. disappointed, I guess. Anyway, um, yeah, let's move. Anybody ready to give some uh, some thoughts there? I'm I'm ready to go. Coach, put me in, Coach. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for this? Do, do, do. Put me in the game, Coach. Put me in the game. Put me in, Macro. I'm ready, I'm ready to play. play. Play center field. All right. Go uh, go ahead, there, Ash. Okay. Uh, first off, thank you, Chris, for the beer. Uh, if it weren't for Chris, you would be uh, last one member tonight. Yeah, and um, Way to go, Chris. That may, that may be a good thing or bad thing. I, I, I don't know. Um, so this beer, 
what do I have to say? Uh, I got a few things to say about this beer. Uh, first off, as, as I mentioned, I'm very uh, envious and jealous of Don to have his name on this. Um, I didn't even know this contest existed. Um, this is a very unique idea of beer. Um, I wouldn't have even known to how to approach this beer if I was brewing it myself, so kudos to Innocent Gun for pulling it off. Here's my analysis of the beer. So, if I were to close my eyes and take a big whiff of this beer, I would think it reminds me very much of a strawberry rhubarb pie. Um, the rhubarb was super fresh. You get a lot of the, the, the rhubarb on the nose, the, a nice tartness right off the bat. Um, and then uh, get like a like a graham crackery type of um, aroma on the finish, something that rem like sort of reminiscent of, of like, a, like a nice biscuity bready crust, right? Um, the flavor, uh, right off, you know, the, the, it's it's not bittered like an IPA would be. Um, so for me, it's it's hard to rate this as an IPA. Um, let alone a black IPA. It's funny because I'm not getting any of like those slightly ashy, slightly like biting uh, like flavors from like like the dark malts, and I'm not getting any sort of like real heavy bitterness from the hops. But probably what is what the hops are lending is that um, a flavor that's reminiscent of a strawberry. Because again, the, the the taste is sort of reminiscent to me of like a strawberry rhubarb pie. The coconut is non-existent, and I, I'm not too sure if that's something that is from time, but uh, I'm not getting any sort of coconut notes whatsoever. Um, drinks very easily, though. Um, it's enjoyable. Um, if, if I had to make this a style of beer, I would probably... It's going to sound stupid, but it's probably like a black pale ale, if that makes any sense. It, it has a bittering more of a pale ale than an IPA. Um, so overall... Uh, to call this a black IPA from a style perspective, I'm sort of I'm just going to give it a five out of ten. Um, it, it doesn't quite hit all the notes that I, I would expect from a black IPA. You, you know, um, again, some of those like, you know, just the bittering notes like all together from from hops. I'm just not getting it whatsoever. And then just so like those dark, rich uh, flavors from the from the malts, I'm, I'm not getting that either. That I would expect from a black IPA. Personal enjoyment though, it's quite enjoyable. It drinks really easy, super smooth. Um, you know, it's, it's light to medium bodied. It's not heavy. Um, the alcohol is well hidden. It looks great in the glass. Tastes great because I love strawberry rhubarb pie. So from a personal enjoyment, I'll give it a seven out of five. There we go. Ooh, right your, seven, your seven is probably out of 10 out of five, but close enough. Uh, oh, I meant to say seven. So you're saying 5. 14 then, right? 7.5 <laughs> out of 10 for personal enjoyment. 7.5? 7. <laughs> yes. Hey, I'm writing it down. Sorry. 7. 5. Thank 5 you for the call. Out. I'm, I'm, I'm stupid. Uh, no, you're not. My apologies. Anyway, whatever. You're Canadian. You're apologizing. So stupid, for whatever. stupid. All right. Stupid. Speaking of stupid, let's go. No, I'm kidding. So let's go over to Redbeard. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, that was great. Um, I got to kind of agree with Ashley on the, uh, like, doesn't really come across as a black IPA. The taste I'm getting as far as, like, the IPA flavor is kind of mm. similar to, like I was saying before, how their IPAs, maybe they taste like they're supposed to, but I feel like they taste a little bit old kind of thing. Like, the hops are kind of dropped off. The overall flavor, though, the rhubarb is there. The, the coconut, I only really get with, like, the absolute, at the very, very back end of the flavor profile there's like a little bit of kind of toasted coconut flavor but it's enjoyable um i can't really go in, into quite as much depth as ashley did because uh you know i, I don't know anything so um style wise i'd, I'd give this like a six because it really doesn't come off as a black ipa um but uh, enjoyment i'd give that a pretty solid eight i'm actually really enjoying this nice nice so you said it was eight overall. What was the other score? Five. Five. Right on. <clears throat> Mr. Chris. Oh, black IPA. Where's the chocolate? That's what I want to know. This was, okay, this one, I expected something and I didn't get. What I'm getting out of this is just a, an, an incredible rhubarb juice is what this is going. This is a rhubarb bottled into a juice is basically what it is. I mean, it, there's, it's hiding at 6.5% alcohol. It doesn't taste like there's any booze in this at all, which is fine, whatever. And if that was their idea, then that's their idea. Um, coconut, 
no, sorry, Joe, don't even bother. Has no coconut flavor for me anyway, on my in my own opinion. See what I did there? Um, <sighs> what else to say about this one? I'm just reading the back of this thing. I'm just like, you know what? It's okay. It doesn't taste like uh, earlier. I said innocent gun uses and has the same taste throughout all their beers. This one's a little bit different. I'll give them that. This one comes off as a different innocent gun beer as opposed to the typical same dirty water taste that I get in every other one. Um, with that being said, style wise, I got to bring it down for, for it being not what it is. So I'm going to bring it down to a four out of 10 for a black IPA, which it's not in my own opinion anyway, but in my other own opinion, fuck, I guess stop saying it now. Uh, personal What's enjoyment. I don't mind it. I mean, I don't mind rhubarb. I don't mind. Uh, Ashley was saying, you know, strawberry rhubarb pie by a pie. I can see where, where he was going with that. And yeah, it's quite enjoyable. It's not offensive at all. I mean, you can, you can really like pound these back. You, I mean, you're going to have you know, that six point, what is it? 6.2%. Yeah. You have three or four of these and you're going to start feeling a little bit of a buzz and that's cool. That's fine. It's, it's more of a sessionable beer. Sure. Why not? I really wish on the, on the actual bottle itself, even though it says Don's choice, even though I, I kind of wish they would have said more information on the winner as opposed to saying Don's choice. Cause any Don down the street can say, yeah, that's, that's the beer I put in. I won that one. You know what I mean? Like any Joe Schmo could, could say that in any bar or anywhere that they're drinking. I say, yeah, my name's Don. And yeah, this was my choice. Blah, blah, blah. But you know, I wish they could have given him a little bit more recognition. Maybe they did on their website. Maybe they did during the promos and all that stuff. That's fine. But just any Joe Schmo. At the, at the, same, it. At, at the same time, though, if, if you're the kind of person that's going to try to take credit for that and like your friends are dumb enough to believe you and not look on their phone in two seconds. Well, I know that. But you know. I mean, you know, whatever. But uh, I, I kind of wish that they would have had a little bit more information on Don himself on the bottle itself or even on the packaging. I will agree with that. They do have like a bio of forum kind yeah, of. Yeah, that would have been nice. Um, some some, some kind of history on him or whatever. Yeah, right? like or if you go if you go to Innocent Guns website, they actually have like a video. Oh, well, no, that's video. good. Well, then, then, that, then, that, then, that, then that's appreciative. But, but hmm. uh, other than that, I'm rambling on. A uh, funny story about this uh, beer passing it off to Ashley when I went to meet him at his work. I went into the wrong store and I was looking for a, a sex man. And it was pretty funny when the chick was like, who are you talking about? I'm like, oh, I'm in the wrong store. But anyway, <laughs> that's a totally different story off for off topic. But uh, anyway, that's uh, Guns cap. Guns oh, guns. personal enjoyment. Did I even give a score? I didn't. Eh? No, uh, I didn't. Personal enjoyment on this one. I'll give it a seven out of ten. I don't mind it. Uh, somebody handed this to me again outside of anywhere. I'd probably drink it for sure. Nice. That's all. Right on. All right, let's go over to Mr. Greg. Imagine he's got some high and heavy-handed opinions. Oh, we got, pull, we got eviscerated. Of stuff Before I start, I just want to say, did you guys know I came up with the recipe for Molson Canadian? Seriously. <laughs> yeah, right. See, anyone, anyone can lie about anyone can lie about anything, so I don't have a problem yeah. with the name. It's fine. Um, I, I kind of word beer say if you're gonna lie about that, then okay, like go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. First, I'll start with the smell. When I smell it, I, I actually, uh, Ashley, I was going to say it's more sort of just a rhubarby, grapey smell, but Ashley put it into better words. I do think the whole, uh, what is it, strawberry rhubarb pie, I do, I do think that's quite accurate, the smell you get from it. Uh, and I was pretty impressed with the smell when that's all that was involved. Unfortunately, the beer sort of falls apart for me a little bit when, when you're drinking it. It's not because it's a bad beer. I... Unfortunately, I think Innocent Gun really mislabeled this. Like, there's black, it's a black IPA with coconut and rhubarb. Black IPA, no. Coconut, no. Rhubarb, yes. But it's only 33% of what they've promised you. Um, so, what it is, it's a, it's a nice beer. It kind of does have a bit of the old hoppy taste of a lot of Innocent Gun IPAs. Like, it's like, Mm, maybe this should have been better two months ago. And actually, when Nick starts, I'll be curious because is Nick the only one who's had this fresh, or is anyone else? Okay, no, so I'll be curious. Yeah. I'll, I'll be really curious to know how it's changed because this is my first time having it. So I don't know if the flavors have gone away after two months or what. But um, so what it is? I like the beer. I just, I just feel it's false advertising how they've labeled it. Um, so you know, to me, it kind of. 
if I'm going with a style, I mean, if I were to really be strict and rate this as a black IPA, it would be like a one. But I, I don't think that's really the style they're aiming for. I think maybe they made the packaging. I, I wonder if they made the packaging before this beer was even released and they got, or it was finished and they got to taste it. So, I mean, I'm just going to say it as a pale, ailey type beer. I'm going to give it like a five. It's not great, but it's, I, I don't think it quite knows what style it wants to be. As an enjoyable enjoyment beer, it doesn't taste like other Innocent and Gun beers. It is unique. It to me, it tastes like a nice fruit beer. Like it's tart, but not too tart. Um, and it's got a nice flavor to it. I mean, I I wouldn't go out and spend another five bucks a bottle on it, but that's usually the case with Innocent and Gun beers. I you'd have to be a pretty impressive beer for me to spend five bucks on a beer this size. Um, uh, but I mean, overall enjoyment, it's a nice beer. I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. It's it's quite enjoyable, and I, I wouldn't be opposed to drinking it again. I just don't see myself going and getting another bottle. That's fair enough. I'll agree with that. Like uh, the price for the amount is yeah. That, uh, with, with with a lot of innocent gun special edition beers, it's you expect, no, right. expect, you expect a lot more than you get, kind of. And that's kind of yeah. one of the things that's been about uh, about Innocent Guns beers in 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 recent history is that the they come out with this five dollar beer that you're excited to try, and then you take it, taste, it, and it's a little too bland or mild for what you get. Like Kith and Ken was was like that. I how expected about you, more. To, how about you get rid of this box and then knock a buck fifty off the price? Yeah, it was like three fifty. I'd buy these all day. That's that's and even even this, I I'm not. I'm glad to try because I'm proud of Don. So. But um, as far as my opinion goes, and I kind of almost wish I'd gone first because my my intro is coming down to everybody thinking it is is this a black IPA? I mean, really, when we think about it, what exactly is black IPA? It's until recent, like less than ten years ago, I think that it really wasn't even a style. It wasn't a traditional style. It was just something that somebody hammered together out of a, between a stout and an IPA, but is it really a true... Because I mean, when it comes to uh, black IPAs, what do we think about it? We think about either Cascadian Dark Ales, or we talk about uh, hoppy beers that happen to be dark, or stouts that happen to be hoppy. Um, so it's it's all about... Like, usually when you think about a black IPA, it's this big roasty mess with uh, pine-forward hops that, uh, in order, because some of the fruity ones don't necessarily work. And this one here, um, I find... Like if you call it the black IPA, it's very mild in that department. I mean, the British style of IPAs tend to be a little bit more traditional hops, like uh, more like earthy, like uh, uh, what, uh, wait, earthy, fruitier, or something like that, as well as being very dialed back in the hop quota. The quota. Um, and, and it's also, as far as the black goes, it's very, that's also very muted as well. But I think in this beer specifically, it works for this because. It's it's not matching to me the black IPA style, even though we're saying what exactly is a black IPA style. Uh, well, but that works here because it. I find that it doesn't mask the other flavors that you're getting into. It. It's not be replacing everything with a big roasty mess or a big hoppy mess. It's overriding what you really want to taste out of this beer. And this we, mildness in the backbone kind of brings the rest of the flavors forward without obstructing them. And I find that you do. I do get the coconut out of this. I do get the rhubarb out of this. And yes, I do get the coconut. Uh, it kind of, to me, blends into this nice, uh, and a little bit of chocolate and caramel. And I, I get this taste that kind of melds into biting into the flesh of a crisp candy apple, like a red delicious candy apple, where it's got that, that uh, you get that big apple taste as well as this nice uh, sweet candy out, out uh, outside. Um. And, and, and of course, and one of the biggest things that really surprises me in this is just how much rhubarb actually works as a beer ingredient. And I'd be excited to try other beers. If somebody actually made a strawberry rhubarb beer, I'd like to try that. Although I, I think that that would come off almost cloyingly sweet in that department. But uh, it doesn't have to be. I've made it and it's good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. I take your word for it. Maybe we should do a beer analysis on your uh, <laughs> home. Well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Um, if, but as for. All right. Sorry, go on. Oh, go go on, Captain. All right. Uh, anyway, guys, for this for this goes, um, I'm almost done my my glass, and I'm finding this really smooth and enjoyable. As far as my personal opinion of it, if we were to call this like uh, an, an an IPA um, style, 
the black IPA style doesn't really match that too well. So like everybody else, I'm going to give it a lower mark on that department because what is a black IPA? Anyway, I'm going to give it a six and a half. I don't hate it as much as everybody else does. But as for personal enjoyment of this beer, I got everything I wanted out of this beer, and I'm really enjoying how tasty and smooth and easy drinking this thing is. 8.5 uh, for that out of 10. Yeah, are you uh, drinking for, a for different all... beer, Nick? Is, is that what's going on right now? Because trying to figure out what's going on here, Nick. It's a personal question. opinion. I get it's it. It's in just, his own opinion. Your own opinion. I know. I get it. Not Answering Greg's question of whether or not this has changed since it was fresh, I think there's a little bit in the background that's kind of turned more into like a like a papery, cardboardy, resiny kind of kind of taste. Like this weird aftertaste that's grown more and more the more I try this over the course of the last three months that this has been out. But overall, the uh, the sweetness, the flavor, the, and the and the, the rhubarb and coconut flavors have, are, they're still there. Maybe not. Maybe it's not as potent as it was when it when it uh, first came out, but it's pretty close. Was there any so coconut it, in the fresh one? I know where the coconuts there. Damn it! So I would have two things to say about this too. While we tabulate scores and all that fun. Did, shit. did Jamie have anything to do with this one? Did oh yeah. Oh, oh. forgot Jamie. We got to hear Jamie's reviews and stuff. Oh my exactly. god, you okay. missed it all, didn't you? Didn't you have more? Got my. Yes, that's right. We had a virtual Jamie. Uh, oh, do you sad. need me to fill 30 do you, seconds? Or? Do we need to start over? Is that what we're doing right now? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'll just bring it up on my Everybody phone. Everybody regurgitate your beers. <laughs> <laughs> Baby bird it, guys. Baby bird it. <laughs> All right. Shockingly tastes better now or something. Uh, oh, virtual Jamie did in vertical video. Let's uh, see if we can... Jamie, you're a monster. Amateur. See, if you had OBS working with your thing, you could just fire it through there. Yep. All right. So let's see if you can hear this. Hey, guys. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see me or not in the, in the mirror there. My phone isn't real working very well. But, uh, yeah, just uh, doing a, a quick little uh, shout-out to Don. Uh, I bought six of those Don Choice beers. So it was uh, it was a good beer. I have two left. Um, I don't have any, obviously, with me right now. I'm driving. Um, but, uh, yeah, just uh, of the ones that I tried, I gave one away. Well, I gave one away. Of the ones I've tried, uh, I'm going to give it uh, an 8 out of 10 for personal enjoyment. Uh, I'd say it's probably one of the best black IPAs that I've had, uh, not a style that I really like, and I, I did like it. So uh, good beer. Uh, uh, highly enjoyable. I'm good, glad you got to uh, take the trip. Um, uh, for style, uh, I don't know. I have no idea. I, I'll give it a 7.5 probably because, it, uh, I don't know, it's just, I don't know if it fits the style because usually I don't like the beer and I did like it. Um, but, uh, yeah, if any of the uh, people reps at innocent gun are watching, uh, I'd like to sign up for season two of, uh, uh, uh make a innocent gun beer. Uh, I have my recipe here. Um, uh, lemon grass, wheat grass, uh, grass and peat moss and, uh, eight, eight years in the barrel. Um, I think that would be, uh, <laughs> Uh, to try, you can find me out and uh, uh, you know, give me the keys to the castle to stay for a couple of days and have some uh, have some fun in uh, Germany or wherever you guys are. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks Nick for having me on your show, and uh, look for my innocent gun beer to uh, come out in uh, twenty twenty six. Yeah, summer twenty twenty six. It'll be on your gas station shelves. Thanks. <laughs> That's the Jesus. Um, awesome. uh, wherever you good job, good job, Jamie. Jamie. Even though, even though you're, you just bumped up the score. Uh, <clears throat> That's pretty good. Good. Now I got to tabulate it again. So go ahead and uh, may as well go read, read the comments uh, while I do actual work. Uh, yeah, let's get into the comments. Um, okay, I'm going to ignore that comment uh, from Lee. Rainy on your parade. Have not seen Don's Choice in Maine or any boxes these days. Just the three new ones. Uh, Lee says, it sounds like an, I'd not like this one. Not a rhubarb fan. So yeah, if, if you're not a rhubarb fan, then yeah, you, you won't enjoy this one. Um, Chris chimed in with all rhubarb. Uh, Eric is claiming that he originated Beer to Guard. Of course he did. 
<laughs> Let's see here. Eric Gilbert, ad flying monkeys. I marketed that shit to late nineties Sleeman's drinkers. Yes, you did. And uh, Lee just chimed in with something we all think is uh, true, and that's Jamie rules. And there since we don't censor anyone here, yep. Lee said that he's looking for a ashy sex man. Yes, he is looking for an ashy <laughs> sex man. I, I... Don't be, don't be embarrassed. You are, you are the ashy sex man of the chat. <laughs> the um, I'm not ashy. I, I, I moisturize my skin quite regularly. I'm not ashy or flaky or anything like that. So uh, I, I didn't think that was referring to me. That ain't regular cream you're using. Maybe someone else's psoriasis around here. I don't know. Or, or eczema. <laughs> um, so what I, I, I had two points to say about this beer that were shit. My question was going to be the, was, the, the was two points for shit. shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> I had two points. One was a question to Don since he was there while they were brewing it. So Don, if you're watching, my question is this. When was the rhubarb added? Because I've, I've, I've personally used rhubarb in beer before. I've always used it in the boil. And it lends it like a bittering like component to it. This came off a little different in that it added a lot of flavoring. So my initial thought was that, you know, they added rhubarb post fermentation, probably as like a pulp or a juice or something of that nature. And they that's dry, they dry rhubarbed it. They, well, yeah, yes, and yeah, sort of. Because um, I think. They may have gotten it mixed up a little bit. I think the rhubarb would have been a little bit better used as a bittering component, and then they should have dry hopped the crap out of it with with a coconut. Pieces of coconut. Yeah, like if if coconut was used, when was when was it added, and uh, when was the rhubarb added? I, and and that's just me being a home brewer, just sort of trying to think of the process. Um, and where's the where's the chocolate? I'm I'm just asking. Well, there and yeah, I mean. I mean, it's on the bottle. It says and, it's on the bottle. Well, Jesus that's Christ. chocolate malt. So <clears throat> ch chocolate malt's lending a lot of color, and, it, and, and it's supposed to lend a little bit of like a bittering astringency, so to speak, like from, mm -hmm. from malt. Some roastedness, so to speak. Um, depending on the amount of chocolate malt that's used, it, it lends more color than flavor a lot of times. So, like I, like I said, I think this packaging may have been actually created before the beer was actually done. <laughs> Maybe. It's possible. But All right. Oh. Sorry. Nope. Go on. I I can't think of the other point I had, so fuck it. I should have written it down. Yeah. Uh, just look through the comments here. Classy. Oh, oh, we got a new comment from uh, Tech of Murray, but we'll do more important things, and we'll actually reveal our ratings for the night, which has got to be one of the most lopsided results on beer analysis. The biggest delta between style and overall ratings I think we've seen so far, which is. Style 5.5 and overall 7.67. So overall, we liked the beer, but just didn't think it was uh, matching the style very well. And look at that. Dawn made an appearance after all. Yeah, we actually had Dawn on there. That's him at the York Street store up in uh, Ferguson. You forced him on here, Nick. You're yeah. one my of those current, people. My current beer decided to be jealous coming. of his beer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dawn's him. actually won awards for his beer. I'll be back, baby. Just have an amazing beard. Anyway. All right. So there you have it. We've got Donna's choice in the books. She's done. She done. Done like beer. All right. So, so what's next week's beer, big uh, No, no, you, somebody's gotta ask it. Actually, did anybody ask what next beer is? Where's Randy on your parade? Yeah, Greg just did. No one cares. Greg doesn't care. Apparently, apparently I'm not a person. We'll stay here until uh, all we've got is your losing his fucking body. We, 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 we do have a viewer ask. We do have a viewer ask. Lee Russell asking, yeah, what's next week's beer? Next week's beer, and I'm pretty sure Lee can get this, maybe, is Moosehead's London Stout. Ooh. We're technically going to a macro, but we're going to do a uh, micro beer than they make, but whatever. Yeah, it's something from their new small batch brewery, which opened up less about six months ago. <laughs> and uh, they actually have this available in Ontario now. And, and Ash, can I get that? Yes, you can. Yeah. Sure you okay. can. Otherwise, I wouldn't have picked it. Right. Anyway, 
Come and on. apparently Taku, Teku Murray says Ashley could not be more full of shit this analysis. See, I disagree. I think Ashley did an excellent analysis. But you know what? We don't censor anyone here, so therefore we read his comment. And then he says, wasted fuck you, Nick. Read my comments. <laughs> and then it ra raining on your brain. It's like, yo, beer next week. <laughs> oh, man. Teku Murray says, beer next fuck week. you, Nick. <laughs> All right. Beer next week. Fuck you, too, Eric. Chase, what's got? Hey, anyway, oh, excuse me. All right, to keep it professional and actually take this off the air while well, we're still Please. professional. Let's return with the unprofessional portion of this uh, whole uh, video night. All the Polish sex juice coming up. That's oh, when Nick really? forces us to use the N word. Is Mill Street's uh, vanilla porter uh, back? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's more back. vanilla than ever. I wish oh, it was yeah. here because I would buy that a lot. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, I want to thank everybody yeah. for watching. I want to thank you guys for coming on. <laughs> yeah. Thank uh, you. Hey, let Redbeard talk while it goes off air. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. 